Calc Average Smoothness is a brief program that I wrote the other day which will estimate the smoothness across the x, y, and z directions across all of your subjects within your experiment. The purpose of this was to provide smoothest estimates that could then be used for a program like 3D Clus Sim in case somebody wanted to use the cluster correction output from 3D Clus Sim as opposed to SPM's built-in uh, cluster correction threshold. All right, so I hope that the help output should be relatively self-explanatory, and this is available for download on my website. But I want to be giving a very brief introduction and demo about how it works. So this function will return three values. One is the average estimated smoothness in the x direction, the estimated smoothness in the y direction, and the estimated smoothness in the z direction. And really it only requires three arguments. Uh, these last three arguments are if you want to have the program also run 3D Clus Sim at the same time. All right, so it needs a list of subjects, it needs a directory pointing towards where the subjects are located, and then it needs a path pointing towards where the resms.header file is. This is the residual file which SPM estimates smoothness will then take in and it will estimate the smoothness parameters from that. All right. So again, I'm going to show you what these different variables look like. And this is specific to the way I have my study set up, so feel free to modify them as you want. But first of all, rootdir points towards where all the individual subject directories are. That's my present directory right now, and you can see I have all these different subjects in that directory. And let's say right here that we would like to only look at subjects 202 to 205. So that's going to be my subjects variable. And lastly, I need a path from each subjects directory to the directory that contains the resms.header file. And I've already set this up. It's called model dir. Okay? So if I were to concatenate all of these for an individual subject, such as uh, subject 202, it might look like this. Okay, data drill, space 10, paint study, fMRI, 202 results model. That's where the res.ms file would be for an individual subject. Now just to show that I'm not lying to you, I type in that full path and you see that these, these res.ms files are in that path. All right, so again, let's say that I want the those three variables, the estimated smoothness in the x, y, z directions, and type in the name of the function, and I'll give it the subjects list, the root directory variable that I had before, the model directory containing the res.ms file. Um, group mask is a path pointing towards where you have a group mask that was estimated from a second level analysis. In, either, in other words, an intersection of all the individual subjects' masks. Okay. And I already have that variable set up. Um, p-threshold, that refers to a voxelized uncorrected p-threshold that you'll be using to feed into CLUSSIM to estimate how many contiguous voxels you need to pass a, clus a given cluster threshold. So for example, if I just want uncorrected p-thresholds of 0 0.01 for each of my voxels, how many of those voxels do I need to cluster together in order to pass different correction thresholds? You know, it's like 0 0.05, 0 0.01, 0 0.001, and so on. And then this last one is a flag for whether you want to run a 3D Clus Sim. It's called Alpha Sim here, but it's really 3D Clus Sim. One represents, yes, you do want to run it, and zero represents that, no, you do not. So for this purpose right now, I'm, I'm not going to run it. Okay, so there it goes. It estimates the smoothness for each of the subjects, and it averages them, and you get this output of these different values in the x, y, and z directions, which you would then use as an input into 3D Clus Sim. Now note that in this experiment that I used this function on, the applied smoothing kernel was eight millimeters. 
Now, why are these estimates significantly greater than that? Well, it's because the images are already slightly smooth after they come out of the scanner. And what the smoothing kernel does is it adds smoothness on top of that. So this is important when you try to estimate the smoothness of your images because usually, um, well, I don't want to say usually, but sometimes people will put in just the smoothing kernel that they specified as part of their pre-processing stream. And that's not entirely correct, and it can affect the results that you use for your cluster correction thresholds. So I hope that this program is relatively straightforward to understand, and if you want to modify it, I hope that it, it's, you know, it's straightforward enough so that you have no problem adjusting it to fit your needs. All right, so I hope it's helpful, and as always, um, there will be a brief text supplementary material on the blog, and feel free to post any comments or questions you have about this program on there. All right, so thanks a lot, and I'll see you guys next time.